Brother LZ this morning. So I guess, Brother LZ, I'll leave it to you. And, um, you know, I guess we can start off with a prayer and then we'll let you get into the devotional for this morning. Okay. Well, Father, once again, Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for waking us up this morning, with giving us a sound mind, giving us uh, good health. Um, and our prayer is as we assemble as men, as godly men, this morning and study your word, um, our prayer is that you give us understanding. Uh, and not only just understanding, um, we would take that understanding and run with it and apply it to our daily walk. We want to be better. We want to do better. Uh, we want to be do things that are pleasing um, to you. Uh, do things that uh, benefit not only ourselves, but our families, our communities, and so forth. Um, we thank you in advance what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, brothers, it's good to be here. It's good to be seen, as the old old school preachers would say, or old school people would say, it's good to be seen among the living. Yes, sir. I guess that's a matter of perspective, right? That's something you just yeah. think about, right? Um, but um, for this morning, I'd like to visit an Old Testament passage of scripture, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, um, and look at, in particular, verse 13, verse 13, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and you'll find it. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes right after Proverbs and chapter 12. And in that chapter 12, just like to lift um, one, well, really two verses, but really just want to focus on one verse. It's, it's so rich. It's a lot of richness in these 12 chapters. But as a devotion this morning, I just like to lift this in this 12th chapter, um, verse 13. Listen to these words. I have it. I like it in the King James version for this particular verse. Uh, it, it keeps uh, certain nuance there for me. But um, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And then that verse fourteen reads: For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And so, but I want to focus on that verse 13. Let us hear the, the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And so for this time that we have to share this morning, I'd like to speak from the topic of the conclusion of the whole matter. <laughs> it comes right out of verse 13. The conclusion of the whole matter. And brothers, I like this particular book because when you think about these 12 chapters, it's only 12 chapters, the first seven chapters of this book, uh, it describes all the worldly things under the sun um, that the preacher, and it is normally described to the preacher or teacher, but really, uh, uh, koli left is, is the word there. It means preacher or it can mean teacher, but I like to say collector of sayings. It's a collect a, a collector of sayings. And so this is normally ascribed to Solomon, King Solomon, um, this Ecclesiastes and also Proverbs. Um, and we don't see his name mentioned in this Ecclesiastes, but however, tradition ascribes this and give him credit for this book and also the book of Proverbs. And if you know anything about Proverbs and you know anything about Ecclesiastes, it is a, a collector of sayings that, that are very beneficial for, for mankind. And so the first, uh, brothers, as we look at it, the first seven chapters, it, it tells us, it describes all the worldly things up under the sun that that a person or man would, would try to find fulfillment in. And you will we'll see this repeated throughout it, vanities, vanities, vanities. And, and so in other words, it's, 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 it's kind of Without God, um, uh, I believe Solomon came to a point that we, we it's nothing. It, it's, it's wasteful. It's, 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 that's why he yelled, he says vanities, 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 vanities. But then in chapters 8 to 12, what we see is we see now it shifts. And now we see Solomon giving us 
um, his suggestions or sayings, wise sayings and comments on how life should be lived. And it doesn't take long um, to realize that we need God in our lives. And, and God is, is, is somewhat generic. We, we need Jehovah. Some of us say Yahweh. We, we need someone. We need a, our creator in our lives. And so this is why in verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God. And what's interesting is when we talk about this word here, um, we, we talk about it means to listen. Um, it, it's more than just, 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 uh, it's, it's us brothers recognizing um, a sound. Like if, if someone played a trumpet, uh, most of us who are musically in, inclined, we it, we know it's a trumpet. Uh, we know an alto saxophone. We know a snare drum. We know a bass guitar. Now we might can't bring it down to that level depending on our backgrounds, but we, it's a distinct sound. It, it, it's, it's, it's distinct from a car crash. Mm. It, it's a it's a distinct from someone yelling out for help. And so when he when he writes and say, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, what he's talking about is all that has been said in the previous 11 chapters. He gets to this final chapter and he concludes. And what he says to us, brothers, is the first thing is to fear God. I like mm. that. Uh, he, he says, fear God. Uh, this fear somehow in our local churches uh, have been watered down. Mm. You, Brother Randy, sometimes you might hear that this fear, oh, it just means to reverence. But let's think about this. Uh, if if number 45 or number 46, President 45 or 46 come into the room, we will reverence, we will stand up. No matter how we feel about it, that's the protocol. <laughs> Hopefully y'all yes, stand up. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> but that's the protocol. That's reverence, right? Um, a good a good example of this is doing the civil rights in the South. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a white man would see a funeral of a black man, and that's probably the only time that white man would stop and take his hat off. Mm. Reverence. But as soon as that they bury and all that, then they back on to that foolishness. So reverence is just not a strong enough word. So what is he saying to us? Uh, when it, what fear means to be terrified. Um, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning. So it's to be terrified. It's to be at all. Um, it, it's because he is creator. <laughs> this is our creator. You, you know, we, we ought to fear him. But as a child of God, mm. we can come to him as father. I will father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We know that passage of scripture when we had a relationship. But but fear God. Uh, and this is what is missing in our young people today, brothers. If, if, if you want to know what's missing, no fear of God. Yes, and you can, oh. you, can, you can trace it. You can start with your parents or even your grandparents. And you can you can see how now they have problems, but it just got worse and worse and worse. And if you had to pinpoint it, it's the lack of fear of the Lord or fear mm -hmm. of God. That that's just what it is because they have made their God some tangible op some object, some idol. They have made their God some game culture or whatever it might money it might be. But but Solomon he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, and he says, fear God. Yahweh, Yahweh, uh, Yahweh is is the, it's the word there. Uh, it, it's fear. I mean, it, it's really we ought to tremble, just as demons tremble. <laughs> we we are too, but we have a loving relationship. But what we ought to fear him enough? Why? And keep his commandments. That's that's what the next part of it says. It, it's let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, and then it says, and keep his commandments. And we ought to keep his commandments. A mitzvah, mitzvah is the word there. That that is the Torah. Um, that that's all of God's laws, all of His commandments. Uh, now you probably say, brother, <laughs> it's a lot in there. I mean, they got you can't eat catfish, you can't eat anything that crawls out of the water. But well, that's Old Testament. But but you know what I'm talking about. Keep His commandments. Um, adultery in Old Testament is adultery in the New Testament. Fornication in the Old Testament is fornication in the New Testament. Still in the Old Testament, <laughs> it's, it's still in the New Testament. Y'all get the drift, you know. And so, keep His commandments. We we have we have a duty. And then when we brothers, when we do miss the mark, we have First John one and nine. 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us. That's part of us. Uh, we When we confess our sins, uh, that's part of keeping his commandments because we don't lose salvation, but our, our fellowship could be interrupted. So so what, what Solomon says, he, he first thing he says, you know, we talk about the conclusion of the whole matter. It starts with God. It starts with creator. Now, we don't fear him because of his power. Now, that could be part of it, but that's too subjective. And what I mean, brothers, is what if I look at any occupying force, military, police department, or whatever? So I, is that the same type of fear I want to have them uh, with our creator? Uh, we don't fear him just because of his knowledge. He's all-knowing because that's subjective, too, because we might meet someone who we just think is a genius. Do we supposed to fear that person as we fear our creator? So we for, so Solomon, he writes, and he used this word, uh, Elohim. Uh, matter of fact, he says, the Elohim, and my, the creator. That's mm. what he used here. We, we, we fear God. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God or Elohim created the heavens and earth. This is who we ought to fear. <laughs> the one who, 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 who put time, uh, set time in order. The one the one who said, let there be light, and there was light. The, the, the one who created everything, this is the one we ought to fear and keep his, his mitzvah, or keep his commandments. And then he goes on, for this is the whole duty of man. And, and when he talks about the keep, brothers, it's, it's very beautiful. Um, the word keep there is the word shamar, shamar. I use a lot of Hebrew words, but, but for this devotion, I think it's very helpful because it means, shamar means to keep, it means to preserve, and we get an example of that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Adam was given the responsibility to, to tend the garden and to keep it. To tend mean to, T-E-N-D means to cultivate the garden. This is before Eve was even put in place. Uh, before uh, Eve was even put in place. Uh, this was this is what, what, what was Adam's responsibility to tend, to cultivate the gar garden and to keep it and to preserve it. And so this is it's the same word that's used there. And if you that's that's in a positive sense. If you want to understand this in a negative sense, you go over to Genesis chapter four. And when our God, I created Yahweh, who some of us say Jehovah, uh, when he came and he asked Cain, what happened to Abel? Where's Abel at? And what did Cain say? Am I my brother's keeper? Now he should have been. But he says, am I my brother's keeper? But it's this word shamar. So that's a negative way. But we know this is used in a positive way. And so, and keep his commandments. So we have to cultivate this. We have to, we have to keep ourselves grounded, brothers, <clears throat> in the word of God. We have to pray without ceasing, stay in communication with our father through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, we, we have to, and, and this is the only way we're going to keep his commandments. Now, now we're not going to be like Pharisees and, and Sadducees and walk around and, and just keep a catalog of, of, of what things we're doing right, because just as many things that we're doing right, we're probably doing double the things wrong. But the thing is, here is, uh, we fear God. So when we're wrong, we, 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 if, if we wrong somebody, we want to reconcile that situation. <laughs> you know, if we're wrong, we want to man up. We, you know, when our brothers or even sisters sometimes come to us and they have something against us and hold us accountable, we ought to listen. We ought to hear the, the whole conclusion of the matter. And especially if it lines up with the word of the God, a word of the Lord. So Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And he says, fear God. That, that's where it starts at. Fear God. We got we have to the, the, the fear. You know, it, it, we don't talk like this, but and and but really, he's a terrible God. Not terrible in a sense how we use terrible, but when you talk about destruction, you talk about judgment. Mm. <laughs> uh, this, mm. this guy. Now, now we have created in 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 contemporary Christianity or modern Christianity today. We we have created God in our own image, and we we don't want a God of judgment. We, mm. we want we want a, a cosmic genie. Uh, we 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 rub and we tell God what we want, but let us not forget that He is Creator. Amen to that. And so we ought to fear Him and then keep His commandments. It's beautiful. 
that he will sum this up. This is why this this is this is from the preacher or slash teacher Solomon. Um, this is why this is a collector of sayings. This is something that we can hold on to, uh, and it's it's here. Uh, when he talk about this conclusion, um, when he talk about the keep, the fear of God and keep, um, it's some things that he also says in Ecclesiastes that that sums up. It's three other times or two other times. This one passage here that we're in, let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter, fear God and keep his commandments. And then we also see it in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11, when he talks about that he has set eternity in the hearts of men and that no man, what he's saying, brothers, know the beginning from the end. You know, in other words, he has designed man to have longevity, not one person, but you look at all the ages from Adam all the way to us, and it's going to continue uh, <laughs> past us. Um, and what he says there is that what God has, no man know what God has done from the beginning to the end. So this is why we need God's revelation. This is why we need his word. Uh, without his word, we'll be lost. And then he also uses it in chapter 7, verse 2, and when he says that pretty much death is the destiny for everyone, you know, I think the writer in Hebrews writes it, it's appointed once for man to die, then comes the judgment. So everyone is going to die at some point. Uh, this is everyone has that problem. <laughs> About if you rich or poor, black, white, Hispanic, uh, Lebanese, or, or whatever, whatever you are, it, that, that's a that's a reality for for all of us. Death. And so while we're here, and knowing that we don't know the beginning from the end, we need God's word. This is what he says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And what we need, what we start as we first, we fear God. And, and this is what we have to tell our young, especially our young black men. They need to fear God, not just not any God, but the God of, of scriptures, the, the biblical God, and then keep his commandments. And his commandments is, is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love your neighbor. But the only way that's possible, brothers, is you have to be in Christ. We don't truly know how to love and, and, and until we accept that that free gift that he has given us. Uh, <laughs> you accept that. And so that, that's what it comes down to. And for this is the whole duty of man. And so this is what our devotion is. Um, mm. And it, it just gives us a different perspective uh, um, about, about this journey that we call life. You know, no matter mm. what we're experiencing, whether good times or, or bad times, we, we that fear God and keep his commandments, those are commands, those are imperatives. And in the Hebrew language, though that means that there are strong volitional requests. This is something that he is he is a, a, exhorting us to do, something we should do, and it's something that we're able to do. That's the biggest thing. And so that that's the conclusion of the whole matter. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. My God. Man, that was good. Praise God. I think um, 